All right, my Magic the Gathering fans, I got a treat for you guys. I'm about to talk about one of my favorite creatures from the Magic the Gathering universe, and personally, one of my favorite commander decks. The purpose of this deck is to get Karlov big. It's to drain your opponents for life and to sit you on top of a big pillow fort, making you almost untouchable while you watch your opponents squirm to stay alive. You get Karlov big, you hit him with commander damage, or you just drain him to death. It's a whole lot of fun. Let's get into this. Alright guys, so the first thing I'm going to mention to you about this deck is the most important foundation of the deck. Extort. Alright, Extort says you may pay one white or one black and each opponent loses a life. You therefore gain life equal to that amount. This is incredibly important in Commander because it's multiplayer. When you drain multiple opponents for life, you're gaining that much life. If you have four opponents, you're gaining four life every time you activate this ability. It does require you to cast a spell, so we try to keep the mana cost lower and mana available higher with this deck. Having the only heavier costed spells be the big hitters. All right, I've got plenty of extort creatures and a couple extort enchantments in the deck up on the screen for you to see. Specific ones that are incredibly useful is Cryptgast. Cryptgast gives you the ability to double your mana with swamps. Swamps are the primary focus of the mana base, but planes are also important. This is a light mana boost and is very important in a lot of situations. The second heavy hitter in the extort section of this deck is Pontiff of Blight. Pontiff of Blight says other creatures you control have triggers separately, which means if you have a creature such as Crypt Gas that already has Extort, it gains it again. So if you have the available mana open, you can use it again. Alright, now let's take a quick look at some of the lieutenants of the deck. Athreos and Erebos, the Borosov God and the Mono Black God. Erebos prevents your opponents from gaining life, which puts them exactly where you want them to be, and he draws you cards. One of the most important functions of the deck. Athreos deters your opponents from destroying your creatures, and deters them from sending them to the graveyard. He is great recursion, and drains your opponents even more. A lot of the creatures in this deck are easy to kill, and will be targeted a lot, based on what the deck does. So being able to get them back, and save them from going to the graveyard is always very important. Obsidat and Tesa are very important lieutenants. Obsidat leaves the battlefield whenever your turn's over, so he's very difficult to get rid of. He's constantly gaining you life. He's a pretty big threat too, all right? Now, Tesa deters your opponents from attacking you because whenever they deal damage to you, they get destroyed, and it gives you creatures. She also has Vigilance and Protection from Creatures, which means she can't be blocked, and she can't be destroyed by combat damage. Ailey is incredibly important, because a lot of times your creatures are going to get removed, just because your opponents are going to be mean to you. You're going to be mean to them, so of course they are. She allows you to gain a lot of life from Karlov. Once Karlov gets to 30, 40, 50, that's your entire life total gained back. And there's a lot of opportunities for you to instant kill someone because of that. Viscopa Guildmage does the same thing pretty much, other, you, other than you don't have to sacrifice her. Sacrifice the creature. Being able to give Karlov lifelink is one of the most important functions of the deck, but her second ability is what is the most important. Whenever you gain life this turn, each opponent loses that much life. There are a lot of instances where you can give Karlov lifelink, and if he hits for 40, 50 damage, and they're all below that, they're dead. Period. Game over. Game one. Campbell is a very important small lieutenant because a lot of your opponents are going to be casting spells that get rid of what you and your other opponents have on the battlefield. Whenever opponent casts a non-creature spell, that player loses two life and you gain two life. This will set you above, this will trigger Karlov, and it will piss your opponents off. So they will be more likely to target Campbell than they will Karlov. Two of the very important creatures in the deck, 
Ajani's pride mate and wall of limbs are also very important because of this because they constantly get bigger when you gain life same triggers with ollie same triggers with viscopa guild mage it's very important because you can use them almost exactly the same way that you do karlov let's talk about a couple of the big life gainers for the deck aerial responder vampire nighthawk lone rider and divinity of pride three of these have flying which makes it more difficult for your opponents to block constant life gain constant protection is always good for you lone rider is also a very cheap drop and he becomes it that rises one a 4-4 with first strike trample and lifelink is always very useful Now let's quickly talk about a couple of the constant life gain strategies for the deck. Soul Warden, Nyx Fleece Ram, Authority of the Consoles, all gain you life every single turn. Alright. Underworld Coinsmith, Nyx Fleece Ram, Blind Obedience, and Chalice of Life also gain you life almost every single turn. This is the most important thing. You're going to be targeted a lot. Keeping your life total very high is very important, but it's also very important to get Karlov as high as he is. Karlov's second ability allows you to get rid of creatures, so you need him that higher power, not just because you want to beat your opponents down, but so that you can protect yourself and your field. Now let's quickly take a look at our very small but effective Voltron strategy. Cards like Shielded by Faith, Unhallowed Pact, Dying Wish either make you benefit from Karlov dying or make it where it's a downside for your opponents when they try. Sarah, on Sarah's Wings, Gift of Orsov, and Basilisk Caller all automatically give the creature they're attached to lifelink, which is one of the biggest goals of the deck. Now, Divine Favor, a lot of people think is a weaker card, but if you look closer, when it enters the battlefield, you gain three life and enchanted creature gets plus one plus three karlov gets two counters whenever you gain life so automatically from a two drop you're gaining three life and karlov is getting plus three plus five it makes him a monster off the rip chaplain's blessing grotesque mutation and dazzling reflection are all great examples of how to start off or get that higher life total chaplain's blessing is a one drop gain five life and it's very useful when you have extort on the field because that stack grotesque mutation allows you to choose one of those big creatures like karlov or a johnny's pride mate or wall of limbs and allows you to gain that high life dazzling reflection allows you to gain life equal to target creatures power now the downside is the next time that creature would deal damage this turn, prevent that damage, but that doesn't mean you can't do this after your combat phase. It is instant speed, and it can also be used on another opponent's turn, which makes it incredibly useful, especially if you're about to lose that creature anyway. Congregate is one of the best one-shots in the deck. It can be an early game massacre. Imagine round five or six, you play it, and there's already ten creatures on the battlefield, all right? You gain... 20 life not too crazy right but that's 10 instances of life gain for karlov that's 20 counters on karlov automatically making him one shot range so if you can get him through game over now let's talk again real quick about how you eventually want to make your opponents lose that life other than commander damage sanguine bond and defiant blood lord are perfect examples of how to drain your opponent's life whenever you gain that much life target opponent loses that much life that's fantastic paired with stuff like congregate debt to the deathless death grasp it's almost an instant kill if you have the right mana base and setup paired with viscopic guild mage it can be even worse sometimes all you need to do is gain that five life and it can stack Clefhaven Vampire is also very important because it is very similar to Defiant Bloodlord. Whenever you gain life, each opponent loses one life. There are a lot of instances where this happens, so especially if you get this out early game, if he can get off five, six, seven triggers, that's six, seven life that every opponent has already lost. And if you can continuously trigger this every single turn, it could potentially be the game ender. And let's talk about some of the utility. 
Sun Droplet allows you to gain life after you've already taken damage. You may remove a counter from it every turn to gain one life. It's very good for getting a Johnny's Pride Mate Wall of Limbs and Karloff up while gaining the life back that you've lost. It very much deters your opponents from attacking you because they know you're going to gain it back anyway and it's only going to benefit you even more. Animation module allows you to create a small defensive army off of Karlov and a Johnny's Pride Mate whenever you gain that life. Colorless Servo Creature Tokens. Angelic Accord allows you to get 4-4 flyers to defend yourself with and attack with if you gain the approximate amount of life. Aegis of the Gods obviously gives you Hexproof, which is always useful, and Heliod's Pilgrim allows you to search for an aura. That's very important because that guarantees you can get an aura to either keep Karloff from dying or give him lifelink. Both of those will set you forward miles, and if you can give him lifelink and flying, he normally can't be blocked. So you'll gain that life, and you'll get to the point where you can one-shot your opponents. Now, two of the great Planeswalkers in, that are in the deck, Soren, Solemn Visitor, and Obnixilis of the Black Oath, are very good. Now, Obnixilis pretty much gives you a pseudo-extort with his plus two. His negative two gives you creatures, and his negative eight, if you ever reach it, will allow you to draw a lot of cards just by sacrificing the creatures that you don't need. Soren is one of the most important cards in the deck because he gives every creature you control plus one, plus O, oh, and lifelink. He puts flyers on the battlefield to help protect you, and if you ever get his emblem, at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, that player sacrifices a creature. It is very important for the end game and even the early game because if they're not running a token deck, you will constantly take away the important pieces of the deck. Some of the best ways to draw cards in the deck is Well of Lost Dreams, Phyrexian Arena, and Erebos. Erebos and Phyrexian Arena both cost you life, but like I said before, you're gaining so much, it normally doesn't matter. Well of Lost Dreams is also very important because it allows you to draw a massive load of cards. Imagine Chaplain's Blessing, a one drop gain five life. If you have that five mana, four, three mana, however much you have left over, you're going to draw that many cards off of casting a one drop spell. It's fantastic and it's very useful for the end game. Now two very expensive mana cost wise, but important cards in the deck are Open the Vaults and Ingaruk's Wake. Ingaruk's Wake is a nine drop, but if you ever get it off, it's almost always game over for your opponents. All Planeswalkers and all creatures they control are destroyed. They can almost never come back from this, especially if you're about to win. If you get Karlov in that one-shot range, it's game over for whoever you hit. Secondly, Open the Vaults is very important because a lot of your creatures, a lot of your enchantments, a lot of your artifacts are going to get constantly removed based on people not wanting you to reach the unbeatable point. So, when they constantly remove your stuff, you're kind of at a standstill. But Open the Vaults allows you to get every single thing back. It's not always a good thing to have in your hand, especially early game. But if you draw this late game, it normally will be helpful because you always have a comeback planned. So let's talk about the mana base real quick. Obviously, Soul Ring... Thought Vessel, Orsov Key Ruin, Orsov Clue Stone, and Orsov Signet are all important includes. A couple of the land are important. Most of it's generic. This is a budget deck tech. But Vault of the Archangel is very important because it allows you to give your creatures lifelink and death touch until end of turn. Any opportunity to give Karlov lifelink is amazing. Death touch is also good, but on a land, it's priceless. Orsav Basilica, Forsaken Sanctuary, Scored Barrens, Isolated Chapel, and Tainted Field are also part of the land base. I hope this take on my first deck tech was good. I know it's pretty choppy. I'm getting used to what I'm doing. It actually took me a very long time just to get clear pictures of all the cards and get them on here. Um, but I definitely enjoyed it. I want to be able to do this again, and I'm more than likely going to leave a list of my other decks down below. So if there's any of them that you would like to see, let me know. I'd love to do them. And if you have any tips and tricks on how to make this better, things that you'd want to see, things you'd want me to talk about more, let me know. I love doing this. I want to get a good fan base going, and I want to have discussions about it. Magic the Gathering is one of my favorite things to play and one of my favorite things to talk about.
Until next time.